Okay, so now this time we're going to be looking at Prince Henry, or Hal, or Harry, or the Prince of Wales, or Harry Monmouth, whatever you want to call him. He's the caterpillar of Henry IV Part One. Uh, he certainly changes throughout the text into what some would describe as a beautiful butterfly. So let's have a look at what his deal is. Well, he's King Henry's eldest son, and he's heir to the throne. But, and this is a big but, he's not really acting the part when we see him at the beginning of this play. We find him spending a great deal of his time in East Cheap. He's hanging out with some very questionable and shady characters. He's drinking, he's carousing, and generally acting inappropriately. And uh, he does have a plan, though, to redeem himself. And he feels like he's in control of his behavior. He's got a reason for acting the way he does, for hanging out with who he's hanging out with. And he feels like he's going to redeem himself and change his ways when the time is right. He is desperate to please his father and to win his father the king's approval. And eventually, he manages to do this at the Battle of Shrewsbury. What's he like as a person? Well, he's wild. At the beginning of the play, he doesn't act like a prince at all. His friends are drunkards and robbers, and in fact, he himself is even involved in a robbery, although he does end up paying back that money with interest. He's still involving himself in criminal behavior, certainly behavior that's not fitting for a prince. He is well aware of his behavior, though, um, and he's aware that, that his behavior isn't appropriate and is quite questionable. Um, but his wild behaviour is part of his plan to win over the hearts of the people. So we know from the, from the beginning he's still got his mind set on becoming a king. And this behaviour that he's exhibiting at the start of the play is actually part of his plan. Uh, his father doesn't really see it. His father certainly doesn't approve. Um, and, and there's no real indication that anybody else realise that this is what Hal is doing apart from himself. But certainly, unquestionably, at the start of the play he is a wild character. We can see some quotes here, one from the king right in the very beginning. Uh, the king points out that with Hal, all he sees is right and dishonor. Um, but Hal himself feels like he's going to make this offense a skill and he's going to redeem himself in the end. Hotspur, in Act 5, speaks about what he's heard about Hal, and that is that um, there's never been a prince that's been so wild as Hal, and this is what Hotspur has heard about him. So there's plenty of indication in the text about Hal's wild behavior. Secondly, he's self-aware. He's very aware that his initial behavior isn't up to scratch, but he also believes that he can change it when the time is right. He, he knows what is needed to be a prince. He knows what behavior and actions are required to become a prince, and he feels like he's in control of his actions. And even when he's behaving inappropriately, he ensures that he doesn't overstep um, his self-imposed boundaries. So when they're looking to, to do the robbery at the start of the play, Hal says, you know what, I'm not a robber. I might be many things, but I'm not a robber. So there's still an indication that he's in control of what he's doing. He's got boundaries that he's, that he's set for himself. He understands who he is as a person. And he is very, uh, I guess you could say smart or cunning in the way that he's playing things out. The way he's behaving is part of his plan. And he's aware that um, of the way it looks, but he thinks it's all going to be for a good purpose in the end. We can see here that the, what I was mentioning before about the robbery, um, that he acknowledges that, that he's not a thief and he's not going to get involved in that. He talks about throwing off his loose behavior uh, when the time is right um, and, and changing his um, indignities for glorious deeds. And so he is self-aware. He understands who he is and why he's doing it. He's honorable. We know that once Hal decides that it's time to play the part of the prince, uh, he shows some really fantastic qualities. He, he seeks forgiveness from King Henry and he vows to redeem himself by defeating Hotspur in battle. Um, he offers to fight Hotspur in single combat in order to spare the lives of many soldiers. He extols Hotspur's virtues before and after battle and after he kills him. He acknowledges Douglas's courage by freeing him. He shows kindness to Falstaff. There's plenty of qualities that, that um, Hal shows, particularly at the end, that make you go, okay, yep, he is an honorable guy. Um, there is some fantastic qualities about him. We can see some, um, some quotes here about him being honourable, um, and you can go and look those up yourself. There's plenty more, that's for sure. Um, you know, honour is one of the main themes of the text, and so there's plenty of, of quotes that you can find about how being uh, honourable or discussing honour. Okay, how does it fit in with the themes? Well, in terms of honour, by the end of the play, how can be seen to give the fullest picture of honour, I believe? 
It's not simply about being brave and winning victories, which he is able to do, but it's also in the way you treat other people, both the enemies and friends. And so Hal wins honour in the field and in the eyes of the king in the way that he carries himself. So you really need to look at comparing Hal with some of the other characters, and I think you'll find that Hal presents the, the clearest, the fullest picture of what honour is through this text. In terms of father and son relationships, Hal effectively has two father figures. He's got uh, King Henry, his real father, and then he has his surrogate father, Falstaff. And these two offer quite opposing uh, paths for Hal. The king wants his son, obviously, to stand with him and to defend the throne and be the prince that he should be or that his father thinks he should be. Falstaff, on the other hand, aims to lead Hal down a, a contrasting road, um, a road of reverie and irresponsible behaviour. Hal and Falstaff certainly have an, an affable relationship. Um, they're very friendly with one another. But ultimately, Hal is looking to please his real father. Hal's desire is, is to, to give honour um, and reverence to his king uh, and his father. And so this is the, the father that Hal really wants to please in the end. Although there's these two father-son type relationships going on through the text. In terms of rulership and leadership, Hal is obviously next in line for the throne. And so his behaviour is always examined in the sight, both by his king certainly by the people around him and even by Falstaff. Uh, Falstaff constantly jests about him being heir apparent and, and often makes comments that he's not appropriate for that role. Um, as the prince, certain behaviours are expected of him and much of the play focuses on, on Hal's transformation from being a person who's not acting very regally um, to one who certainly comes into the position of a, of a prince, someone who acts in a way that seems to be worthy of, of taking the throne. And so by the end of the, of the text, he shows himself to be a quite capable ruler and to have those qualities and those attributes that would make him a good king. And that's how we see this great transformation. One of the, um, the great things about this text is the transformation of Hal from a caterpillar to a butterfly, if you like, from this guy who doesn't seem to be fitting of, of rulership of the throne to a character who very much shows those qualities and those attributes. In terms of order and disorder, um, obviously by behaving in a way that's unbefitting of a prince, Hal adds to this sense of disorder that's apparent in the play that things in the country are a little bit out of whack, they're a little bit out of line. Um, not only does he mix with junk drunkards and play jokes, he even gets involved in a robbery himself, so that's certainly out of order for a prince. Uh, his behaviour is against the wishes of his father, who is the king, and in this sense too, Hal can be seen as a rebel. Hotspur is obviously a clear rebel in terms of trying to overthrow the king, but Hal himself is is rebelling against the king in his own way by um, disregarding his, his king's wishes and acting in a way that's probably not appropriate for a prince to be acting in. So what are the questions you should be asking yourself about Hal? Well, firstly, is he fit to rule? What do you think? Does he have the characteristics of a king? Do you think he would make a good uh, successor to the throne? Why or why not? And how does your opinion of that and your understanding of that change throughout the text? Ask yourself, what is Hal's chief ambition? What is his, what is his main aim in life? What's his main goal? We, we spoke about, uh, we speak about Hotspur's main ambition being one of gaining honour. What's Hal's chief ambition? How does Hal's idea of honour compare with Hotspur's is a fantastic question to ask and have a look at the differences between those two characters about what they think honour is all about. And the fourth question, who is the real Hal? Is the real Hal the man of the tavern or is the real Hal the man of the battlefield? And what makes you come to your decision about that? So there's four questions. If you want to get your head around Hal and understand how he fits in with the text, ask yourself those four questions and come up with a good understanding of those ideas.